Okay, so this is lecture for November 8th about U substitution. And again, as I mentioned in class, like we're kind of going out of order. So this is section 5.5 .5 of your book. Let me. Okay. Um, okay, and what we're talking about, so we talked on Monday about um, these integration rules for things like like the constant multiple that the integral of k f of x dx is the same thing as I can just pull the k out as long as k is a constant and integrate as if it wasn't there and just re-multiply it later or that the integral of like f of x plus g of x dx, this combined function, the sum of two functions, is actually the same thing as if I took the integral of each of these component functions separately and added them together, right? So we use this um, in a lot of ways. And then I mentioned that it's, it's really hard harder to undo the product and quotient rule from if you're really thinking of this process as like kind of reversing dif differentiation, it's hard to think about how to do that because there's so many pieces involved in the product and quotient rule. But we do have this U substitution which is useful for kind of like reversing problems that are simple chain rule problems. So for example, like let's say I have, um, I'm gonna start with a function, let's say f of x is maybe, hmm. Huh, Let's do the square root of 1 plus 3x squared, right? And I want you to think, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about, like right now I'm just going to get, like take the derivative and see the different pieces. And so this is a chain rule problem, right? So I can write this problem as 1 plus 3x squared to the 1 half. And then the derivative of this is one half one plus three x squared to the minus one half, take away one. And then I have to multiply <clears throat> by the derivative of the inside, which is six x. But you kind of have these two pieces. What happens in the chain rule for sure is you have this piece here and you can kind of see how it's related to this inside piece right? So even if, um, like even though it's a little bit complicated, it's possible to see how these two pieces, both this, what I typically refer to as like the inside or in the chain rule, what we say is g of x, and over here is g prime of x. And again, just because of our knowledge of derivatives, um, sometimes it's fairly easy to recognize those, right? So I want to kind of think about doing this for integration. And I'll show you um, kind of what we have. So let's do, um, let's say here, I'm going to do this integral. Let's do the integral of 2x times the square root 1 plus x squared dx. And do you already kind of see these pieces? You see this piece here that could be, let's say, an f prime of g of x if this g of x is here. And then over here, you see g prime of x. Do you all see that? Okay. So this f prime and g, um, notation sometimes gets a little bit um, like a lot of notation. It's like a lot of nesting. And so sometimes um, we'll use the, 
letters U instead, right? So one way to think about the chain rule is that it's some function f of u, and then the derivative of that is f prime of u times u prime. And some of you remember the chain rule like this. So now I'm going to kind of use that idea here to unpack and undo this problem and see it kind of um, in its real form. So I'm going to say that I'm going to let u be this inside piece, what I think of as the g of x piece. So not the whole thing, but I just want it to be the inside. And then the derivative of u in differential form is 2x dx, right? And again, like I know that du dx is 2x, right? And we talked about how <coughs> in differential form, I bring this dx over here, okay? Okay, so this is the u part of u substitution, and now I'm going to do the substitution part, right? Substitute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in these pieces where I can, and so I have, I just want to maybe, maybe I'm going to rewrite my integral, so I really have the integral of the square root, this is my original problem. But I just want to write these pieces kind of next to each other. <clears throat> so do you see this? Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. You see this piece right here? This is going to be replaced by du. Do you see that? Because they're equal. <clears throat> and you see this piece right here is going to be replaced by u. And then the square root just stays there. I don't have anything to replace it with. But now I have this problem, which is the square root of u du, and I'm just integrating that. Okay, so I have this much simpler problem, and now this is just the integral of some variable u to the one-half power du, and I'm just going to use that reverse power rule to integrate this. So this is u to the one-half plus one over the same power plus c. This is u to the three-halves divided by three-halves plus c, right? And then what I want to do is, like, again, on for this divided by 3 halves, I'm going to change this into a 3 halves multiplied by 2 thirds. So this is keep, change, flip, right? So this right here is the same thing as division. So I have u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, which is the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. So most of the time I do that it's 2 thirds. And then this is the square root of u cubed, right? Plus c. And then u is just a variable that I made up. So I have to go back and resubstitute because no one else knows what u is in this problem, right? So I'm going to go through here and plug back. I had u is this, I think it's 1, what did we say? That's not the problem. 1 plus x squared, right? So I'm going to plug that back in. And I'll get 2 thirds square root of 1 plus x squared cubed plus c as the final integral of the integral that we started with. Is this okay? So uh, again, I, I'm, I'm going to do another problem so that you can see 
um, what's going on, but I, I want you to think uh, of this um, kind of in this way, using this U substitution. Okay. And so, like, I think of this as a process, but your book refers to this as the substitution rule. I'm... And it says, like, the integral of, and maybe I should write down what these things say. So if u, which is the same thing as g of x, is a differentiable function, Um, whose range um, is an interval i and f is continuous on i then the integral of f of g of x times g prime of x dx, the integral of like a chain rule problem, is just the integral of f of u du. Meaning like I can change kind of from a variable of x to u and then just integrate like normal, okay? Um, so another example, right? So I want to do this integral of x to the fourth times cosine of x to the fifth plus two dx, right? Okay. And so again, you see like the derivative of this, if u, so I'm thinking of u always as the inside of a function. So like this is the prime candidate for u, that u is x to the fifth plus two. If that's true, then du is five x to the fourth dx, again, in differential form, right? And like, I almost have that here. Do you see that, how they're close? Like if I had a five, it'd be an exact substitution, okay? But I don't have a five, right? And I also, like, it kind of doesn't matter if this guy is there because I have this constant multiple rule. So maybe the thing that I have, and maybe I'm thinking I'm gonna regroup this so that I can see the pieces that I have, and put this du piece together. So I have just an x to the fourth dx. That's this guy without the five. Do you see that? So to kind of get rid of the five, I'm gonna divide both sides by five or multiply by one fifth either way. And then I can make this substitution where this x to the fourth is the same thing as du over five, or this, this is the same thing as one fifth du, if you like that notation better, right? And then this now is cosine of u. And I'm taking the integral. And again, this one fifth here, I, with the constant multiple rule, I can pull it out front. And now I'm just integrating cosine of u du, right? And the integral of cosine of just the variable should be just sine, so I'm gonna leave this one fifth out here, should be sine u and then plus c. And again, I'm gonna go back, so here I did my substitution here I'm gonna resubstitute So 
So I get one fifth sine. I'm going to put u back in here. That's x to the fifth plus 2 plus c. It's okay. So this is the solution. I can't leave the solution in this u variable. Um, I need to change it back. It's okay. Okay. Let me do... Maybe one more. Yeah, let's do this one. I'm going to do the integral of tan x dx, right? And again, I don't know, like, if you look for tan x on that sheet of integration formulas that I gave you, you won't find it anywhere. Um, but again, I can think, I know, and a lot of times we're using now these trig identities that I know, but I know that sin, tangent is sine over cosine. And I also know that sine and cosine are like, you know, derivatives of each other with maybe a negative sign in there, right? Um, so here, maybe what I want to do is set u to be the denominator, right? So I'll probably set u to be cosine. Then the derivative of that should be negative sine of x dx in differential form, right? Then when I substitute, again, I can think of this as, and maybe I'll rewrite this as 1 over cosine of x times sine x dx, right? So here's my piece. I need to make this a negative to really do this substitution. You see that? So the thing that goes in for this whole piece is a negative du. That's fine. And this is 1 over u. And I'm going to bring the integral. And again, that negative doesn't do anything problematic. It's a constant multiple. I really have 1 over u du. Right? Okay. And the integral of 1 over u should be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. And then again, I'm going to go back to the original variable, natural log, and resubstitute in cosine of x. So I resubstitute, and then this should be the result that I get. Okay, so I'll um, let me know if you have any um, questions about this.